Hello everyone, Hyper here, and welcome to the Shadowlands preview for the Blood DK. This spec has gotten quite a few changes from new rune forges, a bunch of baseline abilities, some talent changes. Uh, there are still a few things that need tweaked, but I'll try to address everything in this video. Keep in mind that this is still in the beta phase, so things are subject to change. The first thing I want to go over are rune forges, because there are quite a few new ones that are fairly interesting. The first one was designed with Frost Decay in mind, but it seems like it could be quite useful for Blood Decay as well. And it's Rune of Hysteria, it fixes your rune weapon with a rune that increases your maximum runing power by 20, and you have a chance to increase your runing power gen by 20% for 8 seconds. So this, mixed with the Ashure Talent, puts us at 130 max runic power, which is quite a bit. Um, it's not enough to save up four death strikes, um, but it puts you close enough where you would just need to weave one extra ability in between your three death strikes and you can get a fourth one in. So this one could be quite good both offensively and defensively because you are generating more runic power throughout a fight and you're getting more death strikes out. Next we have Rune of Sanguination which was designed specifically for blood. Affixes your rune weapon with a rune that causes your death strike, you'll increase damage based on the target's missing health. And as far as I know, this is 1% extra damage per target's missing 1%. So if the target's at 50%, your death strikes deal 50% more damage. Um, that seems a little steep. Um, I assume they're going to change that a little bit, but currently that is absolutely insane. Um... If you fall or when you fall below 35% health, you heal for 48% of your maximum health over 8 seconds. So it's just like a pseudo cheat death. Um, it's not exactly a cheat death, but if you ever hit that low health threshold, you heal for a pretty sizable chunk. But the biggest part of this rune forge is definitely the extra death strike damage. And this mixed with the legendary that increases or reduces the cost of our death strike, um, mixed with ossuary basically means that we have so many things synergizing together for death strike that death strike is going to be like an absolutely huge part of our rotation then we have rune of spell wording it fixes your rune weapon with a rune that deflects three percent of all spell damage uh, and has a chance to create a shield that absorbs magic damage equal to 10 percent of your maximum health when an enemy damages that shield their cast speed is reduced by 10 percent for six seconds so the last sentence is not all that important, but everything else, 3% flat magic DR is always good um, on boss fights where you're taking heavy magic damage and getting a 10% max health shield for magic damage is also pretty nice. It's kind of like a small AMS um, that happens about three times per minute and that has a chance to proc more, more or less often than that. So... This rune won't see too much use in general gameplay, but on bosses that are magic damage heavy, it's definitely um, a go-to rune if you're playing defensively. Then Fallen Crusader is still the same, and it's still most likely going to be a pretty solid rune, um, just the fact that it heals you for 6%, and then the 15% 50, strength for 15 seconds is just super nice to have. And then we have Unending Thirst, this is kind of a general rune forge. It fixes your uh, weapon with a rune that grants you 10% haste and movement speed and heals you for 5% of your maximum health when you kill an enemy that yields experience or honor. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this procs in Mythic Plus off of kills. If it does, then it might be okay. But even then, just flat 10% haste. Um, um, I'm not entirely sure. How I feel about this one, but some of the other ones look pretty strong. With that out of the way, let's look at the baseline abilities because quite a few things have made a return. First up, we have Raise Dead back. It summons a ghoul that fights by your side. I don't know where it went. Uh, it's probably under the texture. Um, for a minute, that's not the nice part. The nice part is that we get Sack Packed back. That's on a two minute cooldown. And whenever you use it, you blow up your Ghoul for 25% and heal for 25% of your max health. 25% of your max health, especially during like Vampiric Blood, is absolutely massive. And it's kind of like having an extra health pot in your kit. Uh, it does cost 20 Runic Power, but for 
runic power, 25% of your health is huge value. Um, if you think about it, a death strike will usually heal for 20% if you've taken a lot of damage, but sacrificial pact costs half that. Um, so it's just a super nice tool to have. Um, then another baseline defensive that we get is Lichborn. Draw upon the energy to become undead for 10 seconds, increasing your leech by 10%, and more importantly, making you immune to sleep, charm, and fear effects. So I suppose quite a few bosses will have some sort of CC effects where Lichborn will be useful. Um, other than that, the 10% leech is pretty nice during Bone Storm, for example, or if you have uh, Bloodlust up where you're doing a lot of damage, then 10% leech is also pretty nice. Um, and in combination with this, Death Coil has also made a return to our baseline kit. It's an alright spender a range if you really need to uh, dump some runic power for some reason while you're a range. Or if you're trying to heal yourself, you can Lichborn than Death Coil yourself. But you have to keep in mind that Death Strikes will always do more healing than a Death Coil into yourself. Just because Death Strike has so many other things it synergizes with talents, um, in some cases Rune Forges, legendaries. There's a lot of things that go into Death Strike healing, whereas a Death Coil will do a pretty minimal amount of healing to yourself. Other things that are baseline um, are Chains of Ice. That is super nice to have in Mythic Plus if you're trying to kite a mob and, you know, escape the AoE slow that your mage dropped or something. It's nice to have. And then, of course, AMZ, 20% magic damage reduction on a 2-minute cooldown for 10 seconds. And that's going to be absolutely massive for raids in particular, but also pretty useful in Mythic Plus. And then the two abilities that I left for last are... Blood Tap, which is a 1 minute cooldown off the GCD, uh, 2 charges, and it generates 1 rune whenever you press it. It looks like this. Um, and then whenever Bone Shields are uh, consumed, you get 2 seconds CDR on it for each charge of Bone Shield. So in reality, this is a much shorter cooldown than a minute. It's a nice ability to have. It's going to add quite a bit of like extra button pressing that you need to do during your rotation just because it adds extra runes to your rotation and it's also off the GCD. So you just need to micromanage it a little bit. Um, it's going to be nice to have in, in the situations where let's say that you ran out of runes or you have one rune and you're trying to get a moral rend out um, just to get that extra death strike in. In those situations, getting a rune on demand is nice to have. And the next thing is Rune Tap that has become baseline. It's a 25 second recharge time, uh, two charges, and it reduces all damage taken by 20% for four seconds. My only complaint about this is that it costs one rune. It is off the GCD, so you can press it, you know, when other things are going on, and you press other buttons, but it does cost one rune. So if you end up being rune locked, you might have to like blood tap rune tap. Um, and also it's only 20%. 20% is a fairly weak damage reduction. And I also don't like rune tap just the idea of it for DK because if you're rune tapping, you're taking less damage, which means that your death strikes are healing for less. Um, Blood DK is all about taking more damage so you heal for more. Um, the one huge upside of rune tap being baseline is that you can pop it on pull whenever you run into a pack of mobs into a boss and you don't have any stacks of bone shield up typically that's where death knight is the most vulnerable so just having rune tap um, to activate and run into a pack is absolutely massive so those are the baseline abilities that have been added changed modified and so forth um, so let's take a look at the talents, because the talents have been reshuffled quite a bit. In the first row, we no longer have Rune Strike, I believe it was. Um, and instead, instead Tombstone has been moved here. Um, still, one minute cooldown consumes five, five Bone Shield charges, and you gain Runic Power and absorb damage for each Bone Shield um, that it consumed. So this is a god-awful talent. I don't know why they haven't changed it yet. This talent 
Um, if you guys have read the Wowhead article about the state of Blood Decay and Shadowlands, they make a very good point that this talent should do the exact opposite of this. And it should give you uh, Bone Shield charges and consume your runes instead of consuming Bone Shield charges and giving you runic power. Um, that would be because if that was the case, then you can simply press this talent whenever you run into a boss fight and you would not run in with zero bone shield stacks. Like bosses like Orgozoa, for example, in EP would literally one-shot blood decays if you didn't get the parry chance on their first auto attack um, or if you didn't have vampiric blood plus an external up, which is absolutely insane. So having bone shield up when you run into a fight is super important. Um, so I really wish that they look at this talent and change it. In the second row, uh, these Rapid Decomp and Hemostasis hasn't been changed as far as I know. Consumption has been buffed by 50%, it just deals more damage and it's going to heal you based on the damage it deals. So they buffed both the damage and the healing. Um, consumption needs a little something extra. On AoE, Hemostasis is just better. Consumption needs to have something, like Leech, for example. Maybe not as much as it did in Legion, but it needs something extra. In Tier 3, Foul Bulwark and Oshery have not been changed, but then we have a new talent called Relish in Blood. While Crimson Scourge is active, your next D&D heals you for 270 health per Bone Shield charge, and you immediately gain 10 Runic Power. In my mind, it would make sense to have this talent up in Tier 1 instead of Tombstone, and you know tombstone replaced with something else um in this row i don't think this talent is competitive maybe if the healing is absolutely insane but honestly i don't see it being all that great if this was a tier one talent yes there would be a hard choice between these three because all of them would be competitive but ashuri is just such a good talent that i don't see relish and blood competing with it too much then in tier 4, Will of the Necropolis is unchanged. Anti-Magic Barrier has been buffed from 15 seconds to 20 seconds CDR on AMS. And also the damage um, amount absorbed was buffed from 30% increase to 40% increase. So that's quite nice to have. It's going to be pretty useful talent on bosses where you take heavy magic damage. And then we have Mark of Blood. This one has been heavily buffed uh, because they removed the runic power requirement for it. So essentially, you can keep this up on any target for free, and you just heal for 3% of your health or whoever the boss or your target is attacking every time that they do get attacked. This is going to be quite nice on bosses where you're kind of taking steady amounts of damage. Maybe Will of the Necropolis is not all that useful anymore. You're never really falling below 30% health, so Mark of Blood will just get more value. Um, but on bosses where you're taking huge hits from time to time, uh, Will of the Necropolis will still be the go-to talent. Then in the utility tier, I don't think anything's changed. In our second to last tier, Voracious has been buffed. Uh, Death Strike's healing is increased by 20% and it grants you 15% leech for 8 seconds. So previously, whenever you Death Strike, you gained leech. Now your Death Strike healing is also increased. So as you can see, there's a lot of talents, legendaries, and rune forges that work in combination and in tandem with our Death Strike. So Voracious will be the go-to defensive option in my opinion, um, especially early expansion on progress, anything like that. Voracious will most likely be the the option to go for. Death Pact, they introduced this talent. Um, I hate this talent for Blood just because it's competing with two other good talents and also just the design of it where you heal for a huge amount and then absorb a huge amount is super dangerous for Blood DK um, because Blood DK's health pool is extremely volatile. It's constantly going up and down and not being able to get healed for any amount of time, even if it's 30% of your health, uh, can be quite dangerous. So I honestly don't really like this talent option. Then Bloodworms will still be the standard talent whenever you end up in the situations where you need both damage and healing. Um, so this will most likely do less healing overall than Voracious, but it does provide you with damage because the Bloodworms do some DPS. So 
ups and downs. Then in the last tier, Purgatory and Bonestorm have not been changed as far as I know. However, Red Thirst has been buffed from 1 second per 10 runic power to 1.5 seconds per 10 runic power. So they buffed an already good talent and this will be, most likely be the go-to for like progress and any high mythic plus keys. Um, and then stuff where you don't need the extra vamp blood up time, you just take Bonestorm. And then stuff where you're in danger of getting one shot randomly, you take Purgatory. Um, so this is just a straight buff to an already good talent. But yeah, those were the blood DK changes. Like I said, there's quite a few that, especially to the base kit, to the talents, um, most of the changes have been to how things interact. And also keep in mind that we do have the whole soulbind system, the soulbind conduit system, and the legendary systems. I'm not going, um, and the covenant ability system, I guess. I'm not going to mention all of those for Blood DK in this video um, because each of them have separate videos. So if you're curious about those, you can check those out. But either way, I'm curious to see what you guys think about these Blood DK changes. Are you looking forward to playing Blood DK? Do you wish they made more changes? And if so, what do you think they should be changing? Um, excited to see that in the comments section. And again, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.